So I'm totally excited about today's session. I think uh, this is one of the first play and learn in which we're going to discuss about the genesis of Tomo Club, how this idea shaped up with time, and um, how it's impacting the students' life. And uh, I think uh, having this conversation in a candid manner with you have never been an opportunity on a public forum. So super excited about it. I know. I don't think so. anyone's ever heard the generation story, right? Like how it all started out and uh, how, what was the first idea where it began and how we have all come across to this place where it is. Yeah, absolutely. So without further ado, I think uh, let's begin. I We have, usually most of our viewers consume this content after the you know session as a recording. So, but I'm so happy that we have Aarti joining us today. So, don't want to uh, intimidate you with Aarti, but if you would like to introduce yourself or your background, it will be good for us to know. Hi, Aarti, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. We can. Right. So, yeah, I'm not switching on the video. Sorry for that. Oh, <laughs> but really? just just quickly i wanted to see what you offer for uh, older kids i think i did send a message to you guys to you know what do you offer like gaming sounds such a in thing for kids these days and yeah. if they are getting educated like you cannot really separate them from gaming because it's a part of their culture of being in their social environment so something that i wanted to check with is how are you incorporating gaming and education together Oh, I'm absolutely. sorry, yeah. I didn't introduce myself, so yes. <laughs> sorry about that. So yeah, I'm Aarti and I live in Dublin, Ireland. I am I'm a, an entrepreneur myself and I do uh, teach younger children as well STEM education through Lego. That's one side of it for many years. Before that, I was an IT consultant. And now recently in last three years, just before COVID, I am a qualified uh, transformational therapist. So I... I'm multifaceted at the moment, doing many things at a time. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's me. Absolutely. I'm so happy to have you on board. And the good Thank thing you. is that we will divide our conversation in two parts. One mm -hmm. is, of, of course, talking about the genesis of Tomo Club. But then the second half will be about playing the game. Because right. it's difficult to imagine how gaming can be education as well. Absolutely. So we will experience it live. So if you're joining through a laptop or a computer, you could play the game with us oh, fantastic so, yeah i i am i've jo joined through my laptop my son is not here but i would like to know first before i can even say it to him absolutely, absolutely. thank you oh, is your son? he's 17 <laughs> but he he has certain anxiety issues which for which he is homeschooled at the moment and gaming he loves gaming so i thought like you know this would be something very interesting for me to understand brilliant perfect uh so let me just quickly introduce myself and then I, of course manik you can go ahead next so i am avinash i am a co-founder at tomo club and um, we have been doing it this for almost two years now and um, before we jump into the idea how the, it came across but both me and manik have been co-entrepreneurs before in other startups as well and um, we came across this idea after taking a sabbatical and went on our own research phase and then we stumbled upon this idea in a very different format than what it is today. But um, I'll let Manik introduce himself and then we talk more about it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. So basically, Avinash and I started this. In, I think we generated the idea a while back. And it all happened because of the fact that we've been entrepreneurs for seven years. And we've known each other for 13 years right now. And that. I think that's a long time. So we've been together since our college days. We've been together. We've understood how the other person functions. And that's why we also think it's a great team between the both of us because we know each other's strengths as well as weaknesses. And we are super complimentary on those aspects. Uh, but the idea was when we were doing other startups, we realized that the skills which were always critical for us or things which were important were never really taught. So how do you look at decision-making, mental models, uh, emotional regulation, even uh, things about creativity. It's no one teaches you those things till the time you're an adult. And then you're like, oh, there's an executive coach for this, or there's a life coach, or there's learning development in corporates. So there's so much which is happening in the adult space, 
but we never think of it at from a kid's perspective we never think what is going to be the thing that's going to be taught to the kids say when they are so imagine a kid who is born in 2020 20 years later when they enter the workforce we have really not big ideas what the workforce would look like even right now so much has changed right like there's no, jobs that existed 20 years back they used to be printing presses and there were so many other things which a lot of kids will have never heard of or will never hear of and uh, that's how it's going to change i think the whole onset of the ai and how the whole web development is taking place that's making us think what next is going to take place what's going to happen next and what are the skills which are going to super last them right and i think decision making emotional awareness being connected with all of those things would be the key and you can ask anyone in any profession and they will always say that hey this is the key piece to it avinash would you want to add something here you're on mute so definitely manik touched upon the future aspects of skills i'm talking about even the present so as an entrepreneur we have you know hired a lot of people we have to let go a lot of people but one thing that i commonly believe is that i'm obsessed about the skills that really help you succeed in life and uh, if you pick up any random people on the street or from any different profession and if you try to ask what skills really help you succeed in life they'll always come up with soft skills first they'll talk about collaboration communication team building and they will not bring up the hard skills even in the top 5 they'll not mm-hmm. bring up design or engineering or you know marketing as the reason of their success so that's the angle that i believe in and uh, teaching these skills early is something that i am really passionate about and that made me feel that you know i can enter an educational field where it's kind of a mayhem on the macroeconomic space <laughs> where nobody is doing edu- ed tech specifically but me and manik were like you know it doesn't really matter the macroeconomic scenarios can keep on changing but you want to do something that you really believe can create an impact on a entire generation and um, agreed with manik i think the evergreen skills because even if you are the smartest uh, lad in the room you still have to collaborate and work together as a team to really be successful and um, that's one of the common ethos behind uh, the tomo club perspective just to give you an idea tomo club stand for tomorrow club so that was another okay. idea and also manik uh, you would like to mention about uh, the japanese preference of uh, tomoe yeah i'm not sure if you've read this book called toto chan it's one of the most popular books in japan from the 20th century and it's been translated to over 80 languages it's a kids book it's a book of a girl who was being in a kindergarten taught in an alternate school and when you just read that story right like and this is around the time of world war uh, so world war 2 and japan is being bombed and us is coming everything's happening but the way the whole school and the structure of the school was built was so wonderful that as a person she became really successful and then uh, she was an actor and then she wrote her journey of as a kid and that inspired and the name of the school was tomoe and that's why a lot of people can actually take that reference because it's so popular uh, so when we thought of it we uh, did get inspired by all the alternate schools that have already existed and it could be as soon from montessori to public like the whole schooling and the education system has always been something which fascinates us uh, and as engineers what we like to do is to just think of falsifying everything which is proven already right and just trying to see how experiments can be done that's why gaming also and that's the foray which i'm going to take into gaming is uh, we wanted to change how education is thought about from scratch like what's the pedagogy change that can take place how can you incorporate things which are new and uh, if you and there's so much research on it and if you think of kids right think of uh, criss cross right like just think of tic tac toe just the criss cross the zero as an excess that we used to play mm-hmm. we played for couple of years before we realized that it's always going to end up in a draw so the brains as a kid kind of starts out with playing games for them the peekaboo is a game for them a lot hide and seek is a game. So there's so many games that the kids play because their brain kind of develops a lot faster because there's a adventure and the fact that you can't really fail in a game so when you're thinking of game from a that perspective that we've all played games where we haven't really and then you think can we relate 
different things to it. And that relation or, you know, the deliberate practice, when you guide someone from a thing which they're very interested in, they kind of learn really fast. And I have an example of someone, you know, who was trying to teach me guitar. And uh, and this is something which I take. Like, uh, as a kid, someone taught me guitar, like chords and everything. And I'm like, okay, they're just making me practice chords. But I don't want to learn guitar to practice chords. And the other, like I, within three weeks, I gave up. And the other person was like, hey, let's start by learning you, learn the first song which you would want to play. Whatever that song is. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna, wanting to play Daft Punk or like, you know, Backstreet Boys because that was the in thing. They're like, let's start with that. And then we will teach you what chords is. So if you start with things which are already interesting to the kids, most of the education is not engaging enough. I think once you start with something which is already engaging and which takes their attention, you can teach so much. Like imagine chess. You can teach probability through chess. There is so much strategy that goes into it. A lot of MBA classes are built on chess. So that's how we think, ki, how do we build games that kind of teach those skills? And each game that kind of is designed at Tomo Club is designed with an idea of what skills we want to teach to the kids and how it's going to correlate in that. The learning outcome should come out really, really strong. And it shouldn't be for the only extrovert kids who are going to speak out and be the ones who take the lead. Everyone should have an equal and level playing field. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, um, gaming is like a universal language. It kind of breaks down the barriers of language, culture, or your ethnicity in that way that you all can come together and play. And I think uh, that's one of the, again, very interesting angle that we have seen in our sessions that kids are able to open up pretty fast when they're playing a game rather than any other medium. And I totally believe whether it's any physical sport like basketball or volleyball, it teaches so much about the sportsmanship, about how to manage failures, how to manage rejection. You have to sit on a bench a lot before you can you know, actually play. You have to stand up to yourself and you have to fight the bullies. You have to uh, regulate your victories to keep your head straight. They're just I can just go on and on. But Manik, I want to start this conversation in a different direction. What was your first version of Tomo Club that you stopped thought of building up? And I'll come up with my first version. Okay. The first version when I thought of building this, I didn't think games. The first version I was thinking was mental models and decision-making skills plus emotional regulation. These were the first thought process of Tomo Club. I remember conduct and I have been a teacher myself. So I remember conducting these classes and this is before... Uh, so before oh, Randall is also here. Are you saying something? Right? Yeah, just lost my thought there. But when we started Tomo Club, right? Like I think it was even before you joined in. For me, it has always been a inspiration on how, what is the value being derived to the kids. We started with conundrums. We started with giving kids topics to discuss and letting them come out and speak as much. But the problem there we faced was that one kid would take the center stage and speak as much as possible while others didn't speak around. So that's one of the things which I realized that, oh, collaboration is a key aspect, but the, there are kids who want to be always in the center of attention. They won't allow everyone to be participated of it. So that became an important aspect in the game design itself. The other piece which I realized when we were discussing this, right? Teachers make a really big difference in kids. Like what I think of, you know, how do you think of uh, deliberate practice? It is super, super important. The direction you take them, the nudges which you give them and how a kid's brain is like a sponge. Like they understand, replicate, do things in such a manner that most people, as adults, even I'm shocked. I, I don't see adults being able to take up new games, new challenges, new rules at the way the kids are. The kids are just super smart on that. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Avinash? So my first uh, version of Tomo Club in my head was offering kids real-world exposure. I wanted it to be on the lines of an internship, research projects, how students can very, in the early phase, get a taste of how the world works. So I think my inspiration was once my nephew visited my previous company's office and uh, he spent the entire day like jumping around, talking to everyone from customer support to the software development team to operations team. 
and i think that has laid a such a great impression on his psychology about uh, the workforce or the work field that i could see that his perspective about education changed so i was very inspired that you know giving student exposure of real world situations can come very handy for their overall development so but again after discussing with you we realized the common uh, intersection where we both kind of align is the skills whether through exposure whether through mentor models conundrums videos discussions but then we all went back and started talking to more students and parents and uh, all we could hear was about minecraft and roblox and uh, there were always a mixed response from parents about the good thing and the bad thing about these platforms of course these platform was enabling kids express their creativity um, socialize with their peers but at the same time was also sometimes becoming addictive sometimes uh, increasing the screen time issues as well as not sure who you are playing with the safe space angle and um, whether it's someone who might cyber bully them or someone they might just get lost in the gaming world itself so how do you make games ethical or how the education can be meaningful through games was a common concern we were hearing back and forth yeah i think uh, during that time itself right when we i remember asking this to sai who's part of our team and uh, we were discussing there must be some games which we can play right like we don't have to build games as a company why should we build games there are so many games in the world if we can teach through baseball basketball cricket any game right like we're going to pick up a game and we're going to teach sl through that or we're going to teach 21st century skills through those games and we were looking like on there must be online multiplayer games that exist and then we started deep diving and researching i think and let me just be honest on that part as a founder of tomo club my best part is to play games like i yeah. think uh, and uh, and the other and the consequences of playing games is that my parents and when my family walks in my room right and looks me playing games they're like are you really working you show sure you <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like yeah that's why i really like doing what i'm doing right so so i think the, the conversation that we had are there games that exist that are multiplayer games are there games which can teach and don't get me wrong there are multiple you know mo rpgs and like so many from dota to pubg to fortnite there's so many games that does exist and there's so much of content that can be taught through them the only problem that we faced if we had to teach something from pubg right like one of the most popular games in the world right at the moment if we have to teach from pubg or from dota it becomes really difficult because we can't control the kid to not play as a moderator if you need to have like a lesson plan to it there is a way to control the kid from not just continuously play and we faced that right like initially we built a game where the moderator didn't have controls and the kids could continuously play they were not stop playing so for them to learn the deliberate practice is important for them to understand what are we are saying and what what's the important of say opportunity cost or what's really important in terms of compounding what's compounding if looks like what's an exponential curve how do you look at different different those, those skill sets so so that's about that's when we realized we have to have those things in house and when we looked at other small games there weren't any so even at this point i'm super proud that our ip that what the games that we have built is like none another than what we have like the closest that comes are the board games and i think the problem with board games are they're mostly four player games no one's thought of building a 20 or 30 player game so the whole classroom can play yeah and we can all have fun together i absolutely i remember we honestly grilling sai a lot of times ki come on dude get me some games i can you know put out there in the world i can make a lesson plan around it and um, and we used to test out a lot of games and finally we decided that you know we have to create this entire in house team and um, though it is scary but i'm i'm really happy and uh, blessed with this that how the team has come out and develop a whole curriculum and that's how the next transition came in when we started understanding who are our customers so whether we are going to be direct to parents or we're going to be selling to the schools 
since we have a common belief that social emotional learning cannot be taught in silos it needs to be a collaborative uh, cohort kind of setup and uh, the schools are already providing that facilitating that kind of a setup so rather than me getting enrolling students one by one and then creating a cohort which might or might not sustain the school is a a system a systematic place already for that and when we started understanding more about schools then we realized that what we are talking about comes under the realm of social emotional learning and the schools have been uh, purchasing those curriculums um implementing those curriculums and assessment tools not not new it's been doing it for almost uh, 40 years more and uh, those curriculums have failed in a way to keep up with the new change keep up with the students learning behaviors mm-hmm. and that that was a way the idea you know iterated to what it looks like today it's a game based social emotional learning curriculum as per the state standards so again uh, we have a great team of curriculum designers and uh, psychologists who could map each game that we have with the learning outcome specific learning outcome so that it can come under the curriculum which is obs- again a new thing there is a lot of game based curriculums in uh, stem in math science english uh, dual lingual is a great example for that but there are none or i would say actually i can say none <laughs> in uh, social emotional learning and uh, you could create con- you can like manik said you can create your lesson plans out of existing shooting racing uh games as well but how long it can sustain and cover up the entire year curriculum that becomes a challenge there so yeah and now manik would like to tell me like what's going on right now to our viewers what stage tomo club at is at right now so tomo club has been uh, it's been a year and a half since we started out February of 2022 is when we started form the company and you know there's been the process of building things it took us a good year and a half to build everything out so that we have the curriculum we have the games we have the content and we started testing from January this year and the more we have tested the more we have realized that the engagement is super important for us and that's been really rocking <laughs> if i have to use the right words the gen z words is that it's been rocking and it's been amazing for us in that front so much so that we have crack five schools we're working with five schools at the moment more than 200 kids have uh, are going to be playing tomo club in the coming year and as and when we speak i think this number is ballooning up so fast everyone's talking about social emotional learning everyone's discussing how social emotional learning is super important for their academic skills for their behavioral skills for uh, for even maths and reading most people don't realize that if you're mentally on a happier note you will do generally well with everything there has been research that's proven it but i think uh, we are still doing our own research still have building more efficacy on it and uh, that's what we believe in we totally believe in the work which other people have done the reason why previous scl ha- curriculums have not been that effective is that whenever you trying to teach someone from a video or someone from a lesson plan what happens is the lesson plan is as good as the teacher you have because it's not a tech product right like it doesn't take care of everyone in the room a game takes care of every and each person in the room and that's why even when the lesson even if the moderator sometimes might be able to miss a kid in the whole class the game has already taught the kids and because it's collaborative the other kids and they everyone wants to win that's a human tendency they start speaking and communicating what the what it feels like i think that is how life is where you don't know if you're a leader sometimes or you someone below something you don't know what frustration feel like till the time you are actually frustrated so for us that's been really important and uh, that's what we are doing we are working with five schools uh, i think we are having a pipeline of 150 schools that we're speaking with it's a little longer process the whole sales cycle uh, we have two schools which we are just on the verge of con- conversing happy to speak with more schools or anyone wants to you know introduce us to the school principal or their mental health coordinator chief academic officer or the principal love to do a session with them love to do pilots with them even if their own kids if they want want a pilot with their kids and their friends happy to reach out to us and we would facilitate something for that and avinash has shared the link of the game yeah 
I'm like, come on, we are a gaming company. We can't keep on talking about it <laughs> and just <laughs> jump into the game as well. So, um, we have like whoever would love to play a game, click on the link. Arthi Randall, um, just click on the link, and um, there's an option that will come on your screen to run game, a pink color button. Just click on it, wait for a couple of seconds, and the game will load. Just give me a thumbs up, you know, if you are playing and if you are uh, joining the game link. Okay, I got a thumbs up from Sai. Aarti, Randall, Chelsea. Are you guys playing the game? Yes, Aarti is playing the game. So when you uh, put your username, Aarti, uh, make sure that on the next screen, select the server as Europe. Since you are in Dublin, I think that should work best for you. And um, let me know when you're over there. Should be a pretty much simple flow, but uh, still happy to walk you through. The server we are selecting is Europe, right? Yes. The room ID is 973. Yes. Oh, I see Manik is already here. Connect to warehouses to the freshwater lake using the ground tiles. Yes, Arti is also here. I'm going to put Arti in my arena with anyone. I could see Sai here. I could see Chelsea here. Um, Randall, are you, are you playing as well? Okay. So, perfect. So let's start a game, guys. Adi, just to give you a backdrop, this game is called The First Actors. No problem at all, Randall. Um, si, uh, Chelsea, or if anybody else can share the screen so that Randall can watch. So, Adi, this game is called First Settlers. The main agenda behind this game is to teach students about resource planning and strategy thinking as a team. So, this is the game we usually make kids play in the third or the fourth week when they have, you know, started to gel up together and collaborate well. So in this game, we will create an island and um, we're going to be collecting resources, which are going to give us more points, more earnings. There is power ups. There is way to create electricity, fresh water, fruits, cows, multiple things in the game, which I will not bore you. Rather, I would straight away jump into the game and uh, explain it in the as we go. Very interesting catch that we are going to play for a 10 minutes but it's going to be a dark mode. So what does it mean is this game is a turn-based game. So let's say when it's my turn, my teammates, that is RP and Chelsea, they can see their the tiles, but I cannot. So you two have to guide me. How does my tile look like? You can tell me that, okay, it looks like a brown green uh, water wheel or something like that. That will help me. And you can guide me also where should I put the tile in. And uh, similarly, when it's going to be your turn, you can't see, but the rest do. So we have two teams today. One is Manik and Sai. Other is going to be Avinash, Arthi, and Chelsea. And uh, it's going to be a competitive game. So we're going to be checking up the leaderboard while we play. And um, let's just start the game. Arthi, uh, if you, you can uh, unmute yourself and it would be required to talk during the game. I'm not getting any back. Um, breakout rooms but yeah chelsea now i can see your screen so i can see what do i have but uh, <laughs> you can stop sharing maybe but uh, okay so this is the tile rt can you see that i'm moving around in the map you will have to unmute yourself so that you know yeah, you can sorry <laughs> yeah. yeah so okay uh, can you tell me how does my tile look like rt it's like three hexagons joined with one side of each Okay. Of it. And then there is a wheel, wheelbarrow, I think, something in the middle. Okay. Not, not a wheelbarrow, sorry, a wheel with uh, buckets, I think. Got it, got it. It's, we call it water wheel. It's basically oh, yeah, a wheel. kind of thing. So one of the I, one of the rule is that we have to put that water turbine on the gray slots on the map, on this map, so that it can start generating electricity. So since you sent the center one is a water wheel, let me put it here. Perfect. Okay, now it's your turn. My uh, turn. Yes. Guys, are we making okay. the breakout rooms? Um, Chelsea, can you create one? Sure. 
Yeah. So, Arti, can you see? Uh, can like you can't see your tiles, right? No, but I can see three, like something black. Yes. Uh, so your two, so your tiles are brown, brown, green. Mm -hmm. So another logic of the game is the way you make points is that we have to connect this fresh water lake in the center. Okay. So I am joining room one. Arti, you also join room one. It must be a pop up on your screen. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll see you in room one. Take. Yes. <laughs> Got it. So, Arti, you have to put your tile. Why don't you put your tile on row E, column seven, next to the next to the fresh water, not over the fresh water. Um, E seven. Yes. E seven. Yeah, Sorry. Perfect. This is a good look. Chelsea, you can stop sharing. Otherwise, we can see each other's screen. All right. It's just yeah. that Mr. Andrew won't be able to see it. That's all. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, Chelsea, now you got, sorry, Arti, can you guide Chelsea? How does the title look Yeah, like? so you have two brown and the last one is green. Okay. Um, is this? Uh, oh, it's revolved now. So the green yeah, you is can the top. rotate with that small button on the right. Oh, okay, right. There you go. Okay, it's my turn. What do I have, Arti? You have uh, two greens on the left side and a brown on the right. Okay. Two greens on the left side. So, are my green on the right side this time now? No, on the top now. Okay, both on the top. So, okay. Yeah. If I put it there, I think. Or no, I no. Put it... Yeah, that's perfect. See, now we got three together. It got us fruits. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, it's your turn. You also got the same one. You got two greens on the top and a brown at the bottom. Okay, I think I you should put it next to our fruits. This... Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Now we got I can actually see on Chelsea's <laughs> sharing. Yeah. I was saying, Chelsea, mm -hmm. um, maybe Sandra can hear our voices because it's not going to be fun, right? Yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah, let me know what's mine. So, yeah. Are they getting guide, Chelsea? Yeah, there's two uh, browns on the left on down and on the right top is a green. Okay. What about here? Or should I just... Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's fine, I think, either way. It's not going to make a much of a difference. But yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Okay. okay, what do I have, guys? Um, you have two browns at the top and a green at the bottom. Two browns at the top and green at the bottom. Okay. So, okay. Now, is my green on the bottom? Yeah. Does it? Uh, no, I think it? on the, oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, got it. <laughs> uh -huh. I, okay. I, I thought we have to put the brown on the brown ones. You know, uh, like the... Not necessarily, but yeah, we should, it would be better, but let's just okay. quickly run. We just got five minutes. Yeah, to go. yeah. perfect. Okay, guys, our Arena 2 and Arena 1 are pretty much competitive right now. What do we have? Okay. You got green, water wheel, and a brown. So you can put it on this one. Yeah, one down, one down, two down, sorry. Uh, one up. One up. Okay. It's outside. You have to align with it. Yes, yes, perfect. Drop it. Okay, mine. Yes, uh, same. But you have two green on the corner, and uh, yeah, this is perfect. This is good. So let's, let's go. What do I have, guys? Two green on the top and a brown at the bottom. Two green on the top. Yeah. Okay, so. No brown on the top. Yeah, yeah, that should it should be fine, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So what do I have? <laughs> what do you I got, have, guys? You got brown, water wheel, and brown. So brown, uh, water wheel. Go back, go back. Take it back, take it back. Take it back. Now rotate it once. Once more. Once more. And now put it up next to like J10. 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 One up, one up. On the left, on the right, on the right, on the right, on the right. Sorry. The yeah. one should align with the gray slot. It should align oh, with the grace. Yeah. Yes. Got it. What's my brown down and two greens at the top? Okay. I think I know where we want to place this. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Okay. What do I have, guys? The wheel uh, in the middle and the two greens up and down. Wheel in the middle? Yeah. Okay. 
or not guys they are leading crazy they are at 153 <laughs> okay we'll do this yeah so yeah let me get back guys to the lobby and uh, you know we can kind of um, oh, you want to continue playing is it's it's arti turn yeah it's arti yeah arti oh let's let's do one thing guys i think we have a great idea arti can you click the bomb can you see the power ups yeah yeah select can a tile it says yeah. yeah and put it and now can can you can you remove the tile a10 the green one hey oh this one yeah yeah sure. now both of us got an option to choose to vote for it i said yes it's gone okay so i says that we have to connect the fresh water to the lake so chelsea you got two brown and a green so um, you can put it up on uh, why don't you put up on the top most bot the like, top right warehouse this top right oh here yeah. okay oh yeah okay it's my to have guys ah uh, you have brown on the top and bo- bottom and a wheel in the middle bot a wheel in the middle mhm okay okay so we bringing back to the common room guys i think uh, the rest the, the team first team has completed the game oh <laughs> yeah let's let's go to the main lobby yeah yeah so i'm going to so leave. leave room is it no yeah leave back or yeah, in... oh see you in the main room guys yeah can you can you close the back out rooms and invite everyone here Sure. Yeah. And then maybe you can walk Arthi also to the lesson plan. Perfect. Everyone is here. Yeah, absolutely. Just give. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And uh, how is this round for uh, Arthi? I mean, we've all played it at least once before. I mean. to be honest all of us have played it too many times so arthi how was your experience uh, playing this uh, game first time for me it was very confusing <laughs> sorry okay. so yeah just trying to understand what exactly because um yeah i mean it's a game but i didn't really understand the the how like of, of course it's like a team building that someone else has to help you mm-hmm. but um how i didn't really get the whole point of it sorry no not a problem at all i'm glad that this uh, has come up what we usually do in a session is that there are three rounds of gameplay so the first round is just to explore the game right that was a brief that uh, went missing for before we initiated the game but that's something that we speak to the parents also about all right and we speak to the kids right before the session starts that uh, it's okay for you to not understand the game in the first go itself the point is to keep right and one of the things that we cover with this particular game of course one thing that she pointed out was a lot of team building right mm-hmm. so there was a lot of team building for sure however this game primarily focuses on communication and collaboration right mm-hmm. it was the first time that we were playing this game however we were we were still you know communicating amongst each other because we had to reach the end goal right or the mm-hmm. goal of the group so that was definitely one thing but what we like as we go forward depending upon the grade we talk about the learning outcomes from this game as well now right. what the game is doing with uh, you know the different skills is very intuitive we're learning we're automatically collaborating we're communicating uh, within the group we're also listening to each other actively mm-hmm. now after you know the three rounds of gameplay are done in during the session we have a part which is called the debriefing round where we debrief and help children reflect over whatever they've done during the session we ask them about what were some strategies that worked for them what were some strategies uh, they would like to do better the next time that they play 
right? What was something that was working for their team and how can they apply it in their day-to-day -day lives, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, so that was one thing. And along with that, we talk about resource management with this particular game for the younger age group, right? So for the elementary and for the early middle school uh, grades, we look at, we talk about resource management we talk about how uh, you have to plan which resources you require. And if you would have played it the second time or the third time, you would have identified that there are certain resources that give you more, uh, you know, better outcomes compared to the others, right? We also right. talk about time management uh, with this particular game, right? And how time also acts as a resource. With the older so we would talk about compounding. We would talk about how, uh, depending upon the investment in the resource that you're uh, making, you get a return uh, and ROI based on that, right? Mm -hmm. So these are the different things and different uh, concepts that we cover and, you know, at least uh, focus more into depending upon the different games that we have. So as uh, Manik, I believe, had mentioned earlier, we also talk about something called as an opportunity cost but that would be with a completely different game all, altogether. Mm -hmm. right? So what the game does and what these sessions do is create, it creates a safe space for all the students present uh, during the during the session. You know, there is that competitive angle where, you know, as uh, you could have heard Avinash saying that the other group was going ahead and uh, they were doing better than us and things like that, but that's completely okay. One thing that we also keep dehydrating, and that's almost like a motto of us, that learning from fail. We talk about how mistakes are okay, and we're always learning from failure. All right. So we and there's of course we don't uh, we don't focus primarily on the learning or the winning aspect of the games, right? But we talk about what was the process like for each of the kids. So hope mm -hmm. that gives you a little insight as to what happens during the session and how we derive the learning outcomes uh, for each of them. Yeah. So absolutely, like this was, we didn't, you know, open up the lesson plan and uh, gaming learning outcomes in a gradual fashion, like the way we do it in a classroom. In a classroom, it's very really scaffolding that happens over there. So like, mm -hmm. I would show, like to show you a video. If it's an offline classroom setup in which we make the teams, like right now, you, me, and Chelsea were a team. So we were in the same breakout room. So mm -hmm. we do that for virtual schools, but for uh, like brick and mortar schools, we happen to make kids sit together. So like in this one of the session, I just play the screen. So they're sitting together and playing the game. That's another team. That's uh, team B, which is playing on that screen. Thanks to now, a lot of kids have to do on their in the schools, which really helps. That's another team. And the moderator just makes sure that everything is going smooth and fine in troubleshooting. And they have tons of conflict. No, they can't. Like why did do that? Yeah, oh, and they have to resolve them also. So that really helps. And just like Chelsea was debriefing through you, it happens in the offline setup as well when the kid teacher bring the kid back to the rug and then she discussed that, hey, what was the strategy? What worked? What didn't work? What do you want to do in the next round? And uh, Sometimes teachers tell us that I haven't seen my kid talking that much in the entire week, which he or she is talking in that one hour. And uh, that really feels, you know, a great way to understand the kid's ideology, kid's understanding. And when they do this, they talk about this much more, which actually creates a better impression on their head. And uh, their takeaway is very strong. So that's mm -hmm. everything in a nutshell of, you know, how we are implementing it in schools. Great, thank you. Yeah. Yes, Manik, what's your uh, closing remark on this? The closing remark is, uh, I think it's, uh, life is super fun, uh, super random. So much is of it is not something which we can control with us. And I think that's what game teaches you. Game teaches you that there are times when you will not be in control. There are always going to be chaos that comes across your way. Other people's reactions and actions will have an effect on how you're going to behave and how you're going to act to the whole world. It's going to be a still guided environment so that you understand how it's going to feel and function in a proper manner 
hence guided and practice learning and i've been quite vocal on deliberate practice but with the randomness that a game offers and the deliberate practice that our teachers and the moderators kind of give i think it's a super amazing combination for the kids to learn and we have seen some crazy success till now we are really hopeful where tomo club is going and how the future is going to look like what about you avinash your closing remarks yeah absolutely i think uh, one of the common uh, learning that i have is that kids nowadays get bored very quickly so i think that's a constant problem i heard from every parent around me that you know kids always complain that i'm bored and it's good to be bored sometimes but how to make them excited about learning is about bringing new games every week like right now we're working on an extensive library and this first cycle was just one of the games and uh, we want to make sure that there's an excitement angle whenever they come next week for the tomo club session they are not sure what's going to show up so i have seen those kids who used to get frustrated with the uh, game mechanics who get frustrated with losing and not understanding in the first few sessions they starts to be more curious they starts being very attentive to the you know game nuances because they know that they have second or third round pending where they can excel so there has been a very um i would say right away uh differences that i could see in kids thought process during the sessions over a couple of weeks itself that it gives me much more hope uh, much more uh, confidence to keep on working in this field and um, i think ethical gaming is going to be again big uh, how this can all be educational first and not be addictive and um, that's what we're trying to focus on so yeah but i'm super hopeful as you said about how this can be the new status quo of education in the coming years where just like uh, there's a transition happened when teaching was through a white or a blackboard and then it came down to video based oh, no second it came down to presentation based every classroom started having presentation on every topic and then it started coming to recorded video based then it came down to live videos so i think the natural progression that i can uh, i would say plan or just uh, predict seems to be on the lines of game based learning and we are seeing a lot of early traces in other fields and hopefully in social motion learning as well so yeah that's my <laughs> two cents on that perfect thank you so much guys um anybody wants to add a couple of points or anything would love to hear it no i i would just say thank you so much for the presentation it, it gives a good understanding you guys have done really well <laughs> it's a good uh, tool for sure so i'll definitely have a look into it uh, you have your website as well isn't it yes yeah so yeah so if you want to just share that please yeah absolutely i'll just put that into the chat and i'm doing the comments at the end yeah thank you and also i think uh, we'll just drop you an email after this and uh, let's take the conversation forward perfect thank you so much thank you take care guys have a good day bye bye randil do you have anything to add oh yeah sorry any points or anything no, no just uh thank you for continuing to do what you do uh a quick question maybe uh about the leaderboards um have you tested whether or not having the leaderboards visible during the gameplay affects motivation positively or negatively or not have you tried ab testing using it and or not so we have tracked how many times students click on the leaderboard option because it's not readily available you have to click on it to see it in the game there's an option to view it right so we used to we track right now how many times students are clicking on it and trying to correlate it with the um speed and motivation in terms of scores and we have seen the positive till now that whenever they are able to see the leaderboard it motivates them to do faster it motivates them to be more collaborative so right now the numbers have been uh, in a positive light and haven't seen stories where kids because i think the angle is that it's not an individual score it's a team score so that i think uh, is the early data talking about okay yeah very good yeah i, I mean i'm 
very much against using leaderboards for individual scores, but for teams, team competition is fine. I'm um, just wondering teams that fall behind probably do not click on the leaderboard because they think they're falling behind. So how, how to measure that? Uh, have you, have you looked at that, that teams that do not click on and are they the ones that generally fall behind? So one of the things that we've noticed, uh, and this is, you can also earn minus points in a couple of games. So one of the games where the kids have actually earned the minus points, that's when they check the leaderboard a lot more just to see if everyone's also as below in the water as they are. Yeah. And uh, yeah. specifically at the end of the game, that's when everyone wants to check the leaderboard and see where everyone else is. Uh, and on the third session within the first class is when more people check on leaderboard to see how well they are doing. The first two sessions, they want to just play and get a hang of the game itself because they don't know how well they have played. That's the other thing which we have seen. Yeah, see, that's the danger with leaderboards, that if you want to use it for motivation versus mastery feedback. So if you show it afterwards to show mastery feedback for your team, then that's different than using it in-game as a motivator. So to use it in-game as a motivator is very tricky. And, you know, game designers know this, that, that um, it's not, it's not the leaderboard itself that's that's the motive that that's your goal. It's it's the mastery of the game that should be the goal, right? And for you for your case, the mastery of the learning is the goal. So, um, so to me, uh, it's very um, sometimes it's very dangerous to use a leaderboard, especially when you're using it for for mass for uh, for motivation purposes. Um, I think. If you think of in terms of motive, uh, in terms of feedback for mastery, um, how can you use uh, UX UI things for feedback of mastery is much more long lasting than um, well, it, it's it, it's easier to do than trying to figure out how do we do this to increase motivation during the game. But anyways, just just things to think about. Um, I think it's it's fine that it's. Uh, it's there. Um, maybe if you think about, is it worth it to have it in game or not? Um, or is it better just to use it afterwards? Just to show uh, mastery feedback. Is that better? So yeah. just a couple of things to think about for, for later boards. Very no, tricky. Have... That's a good point, definitely. Yeah. But anyways, keep up the good work and uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Hope you keep on uh, spreading new schools. Thank you so much, Randy. Hmm? Perfect. Okay, guys. Uh, see you. See you until next time. Take care. Have a good day. Have a great day. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>